This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this will be like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, if you would please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, leave a rating and a brief written review, it will enable others to be able to locate this podcast, other excellent people just like you. Today, I want to speak to you about how do you know what not to do or electing the things that you will not do. When we all start out in life, we have this view that we can do lots of things. And because we want to be eager, we want to be cooperative, we want to uh, get forward and move forward, we just take on a lot. And most people hopefully early in life realize that you get yourself in a lot of trouble by overpromising and overcommitting and there's not a person listening to me today who hasn't lived with the regret that in the moment to make someone happy or even because it was something you really had your heart set on you really wanted to do you weren't opposed to it but that you just had to really shoehorn it uh, into your schedule in such a way that something had to give. Either you were not able to do it well or with excellence, or you would have to later call and try to get yourself released from that commitment. So one of the things that's going to determine some of your leadership effectiveness is how do you decide what not to do? Now, I know this seems a little backward to most of us, for I have uh, had episodes of this podcast in which we have tried to define for you and for all of us, what are the determinations, what goes into making us sure of the things that we should be doing, or how do we determine the things that we must be about? It was Michael Porter who said, the essence of strategy is choosing what not to do. I think the next time you hear the word strategy, or at work you're having a strategy session, and we all have ideas, we bring ideas to the table of what strategy means. I I think there are some of you who think that strategy is just a synonym uh, for the word planning. We're going to strategize, we're going to plan, we're going to move ahead, we're going to prioritize. Well, that certainly is a major part of it. Uh, coming up with your priorities. But Michael Porter says the essence, I mean right down there, the major component of strategy is you choose what not to do. For every decision that you and I make, we have in essence made a million little decisions of what not to do. If you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or a spouse, significant other, There was one moment when you decided, that's the person for me. That's the person I choose. That's the direction I'm going. And when you do that, you are in essence choosing that you're not going to to go with someone else. When you choose a college to go to, if you went to college or trade school, by choosing the college, you were also really choosing that you weren't going to go anywhere else. That can be true of a career. Now, the good news today is very few people stay in the same field of study and endeavor all of their lives. Now, Steve Jobs uh, had a little bit of the same quote, but just slightly different when he said, deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do. I think that's another way of looking at it. So when we're discussing today on this podcast, what not to do. Remember these two thoughts. The major component of strategy is deciding what not to do, choosing what you're not going to do. And then listen to what Steve Jobs said again. Deciding what not to do is as important as what to do. You have to come to the understanding today. You cannot do everything. You can't be everywhere It's humanly impossible. So sit down, decide, 
not just what you're going to do, but having decided upon a course of action, make sure you understand that by committing to that, you have also committed that there are a lot of things you're not going to be able to do. Well, let's talk about what are some things we're not able to do when we are leading an endeavor, when we're leading something. First of all, let's go back to the word strategy, but really let's start even earlier than that with the word priority. If you haven't done this exercise, one of the best things you could do is to sit down and to look at all areas of your life, your family. Not everyone will tell you that their family is a priority. Um, there will be others who will tell you that God is a priority and their faith is a priority. We can say a lot of things, but have you really sat down and really looked at it? And is there any evidence that these things are a priority to you? Do you spend time? Do you spend resources? And I believe if your family and your faith are important, then you're going to have to prioritize it. And by prioritizing, what I am really meaning is you cannot leave it to happenstance, circumstance, or I'm sure it will just take care of itself all by itself. You have to be proactive. As I have said, things really were turned up a degree or two in my productivity when I married my to-do list or my task list with my calendar. If you're just carrying a list around, it's just a nice helpful reminder. But evidently, because of the way I was operating, once I made a commitment and put it on my calendar, it became somewhat sacrosanct. It became important. Um, it used to be that when I would go to the gym in the old days, I would feel like I was cheating because it wasn't on my calendar. It was just something I did. Almost felt like it was extra until I realized that health is a priority. And if it's a priority, it needs to be scheduled. And if it's a priority, it's something you need to do. So therefore, I, I started putting it on my calendar. And when I kept this appointment with myself for my health, I was able to get past, I realize it's a mental block or a psychological block, but it became a priority because I put it in my calendar. Now, you may say physical activity and your health are a priority, but are you developing those kinds of habits? Now, just look at what you've spent your last few days, your last few weeks, your last month or two. Just kind of peruse your calendar, look at all of it, and ask yourself, all of these things that you participated in that were a part of your life, which ones aligned with your values, your purpose, your goals, whatever word you want to uh, use, or which were just things that filled up time? Now, hear me that I'm not talking about there are certain things that fill up time, don't take a lot of brain work, that are a part of every one of our responsibilities. And unless you have a really gifted someone in your life who can come alongside and help you, most of us have to attend to some things that in and of ourselves, they don't really motivate us, but it's just one of those uh, side things that has to be done in order to fulfill our responsibilities. But if you allow other things that you have some say over to fill up your calendar and they are not a part of who you are and a part of your values and a part of your purpose and they don't even bring you joy, there are some times where participating with things for our children, sporting events, other kinds of activities that they're involved with, um, that ought to bring you joy because your value, you say, is your family. And to really fulfill that value, we have to make time in our lives and in our calendar to be a part of that. But now as you look that over and you begin to ask that question, and all of us have room for improvement in these areas, also look at what are some of the things that really someone else could be doing. 
What are some of the things that if you subtracted from your life and your calendar, you really absolutely wouldn't miss them, nor would they make any appreciable difference in you or your organization or your family moving forward? You're going to have to be creating space. The, the temptation always is to add more, pile on more, put more things in place to start doing. And that's not really where it's going to happen. Right now, you may, you may very well have to erase some things. I'm not saying they're all bad things. I'm not saying I go to the casinos for 48 hours and I'll need to stop doing that. I, I, I'm, I'm, we're beyond all of that. We're, we're to the point of where when you make a decision to do something, you are also making a decision of going a different direction. So just find out and go over the priorities of your schedule. One of the other things that has brought me some pleasure in recent days is I've gone through a lot of lists of emails and um, books and such from wonderful sources, and I've just unsubscribed. I do not have enough hours in the day to read them, and they fill up and clutter my inbox making it nearly impossible for me to get things done. So, just go ahead and hit unsubscribe. I have a day where for about 10 minutes, I look through and I unsubscribe. And then as these things start to fill my, um, as we have these things come in, I just say, is this really something that's adding to anything important in my life? Is this making me a better person? a better leader? Do I really have the time to give to this or uh, the nuisance of it filling my box, my email box? And so I unsubscribe. I would call it unsubscribe Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Go through your email, your, your junk drawer email, as it were, and just start unsubscribing. It's so easy in this electronic era to just opt in for every notice, every company, every restaurant, every store, and it just becomes clutter. There are things that you just need to decide. You know, I can live without that. I'm just going to unsubscribe. I find that unsubscribing from things is what it brings joy because it pairs down my email, it, it removes clutter in my life. The third thing that you'll need to do when you really are making a concerted effort to decide what not to do is to get organized. How often, uh, a few years ago, did I find myself always searching for a file or a lost possession or an article of clothing or our car keys or our computer where is everything? Where, where are all of these things? And here's what you have to do. You have to get organized. What I have found is I put my car keys in the same place. I pre-decide some of those things. I go through every few months and look at my files to just generally to see, have I um, misplaced something? Is everything filed? I'll, I'll even take 20, 40 minutes a week to clean up my office space, file things that are laying around, put things away that in the heat of the moment of getting things done, I uh, just allow to lay around. And if you don't take time to attend to that, so what am I saying no to? I'm saying no to disorganization. That oftentimes slows us down about as much as anything not having the things where we need them to be. I've tried to retrain my thinking, and that is electronically as well as hard copy. I don't have filing systems anymore. I have retrieval systems. I think some of us just are under the impression if I just file this away, it'll be gone and taken care of. Well, the problem is if you're needing to keep it, there must be some reason you think you're going to need it someday. So therefore, stop calling it a filing system, at least intellectually, call it a retrieval system. And how will I look for it? How will I find it? And where will it be? And only you can answer that question. The way I do it would not work for many of you, and the way you do it wouldn't work for many people either. But again, remember, it's not just getting the piece of paper or the electronic document out of sight. 
it's getting it into a safe place where I can retrieve it when I say no, when I say I need it. I got a little ahead of myself. For the next thing of that will help you know what not to do is as you learn to say no to more things that come along, see the positive side of it. Many of us will say yes because we don't like um, to give people bad news and people really want us to do something. But I want you to think about this, being upfront and honest with people and let them know I really don't have the time to do that. And right now where I am, it's not the best thing that I can be doing. I love you. I love your organization. Feel free to contact me somewhere down the road. And if I were ever able to do it, I would be happy to do it. But I cannot just do that now. And I think in order to do that more effectively, you'll need to come up with a criteria um, discussion point. And that is when something comes across your desk, an invitation, an opportunity, you need to always ask yourself, does this align with my values and my priorities and my goals? Does this take me closer to my goals? Or is this going to cause me to replace something that's not that meaningful for things that are very meaningful, like it's going to cut into my family and other kinds of time. And you're the only one that can answer that. My leadership friend, it's going to be very important for you to learn not just what to do, but what not to do. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I hope today this has been like a vitamin or a mineral for your heart and mind. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom? If you could leave a rating and a brief written review, it'll help other excellent people just like you locate this podcast. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying, have a great and blessed day.